Nowadays, Italy is a republic, but as many of you will know, it used to be a monarchy ruled over by the House of Savoy, whose role in the unification of Italy, its imperial expansion and its victory in the First World War gave it a place at the heart of Italian identity. But despite its cultural significance, abolished the monarchy was, which raises the question, why? Why was the Italian monarchy scrapped? So, like most important events in history, this one can be traced back to a man in a funny hat. In this case, Benito Mussolini. As of 1922, Italy's king was Victor Emmanuel III, who had led his country through the First World War and had seen it win international recognition as a great power. After the war, Italy's economy had mostly collapsed, which in turn led to the rise of extremist parties. And Mussolini was someone whose party had risen in popularity and the king was concerned about a potential civil war, which is why he refused to order the army to deal with him. The king also wanted someone who could assert absolute authority over Italy and stop it from lurching from crisis to crisis. And as such, despite Mussolini's party only having about 20% of seats in the Italian parliament, the king appointed him as prime minister. Soon after this, as you'll know, World War II. Now, at first, the war was popular because winning is fun, but the Allies soon turned the tide and with the decline of Italy's military fortunes came the decline in the monarchy's popularity. In 1943, when Italy was very much losing, Victor Emmanuel decided that Mussolini had to go and that he would sign an armistice with the Allies. During the closing years of the war, the king was sidelined from politics by the Italian political class who had come together as a coalition to ensure the liberation of northern Italy in the end of the war, and after that they would then decide what was to be done with the monarchy. This coalition had two sides. The left-wing parties who wanted the monarchy abolished, and the right-wing parties who wanted a constitutional monarchy to continue but without Victor Emmanuel. When the war was over, public opinion on the monarchy was divided, and in June 1946 there was a public referendum. Victor Emmanuel had already surrendered most of his authority, but he didn't want his own personal unpopularity to kill the monarchy, and so he abdicated on behalf of his son, now King Umberto II. The vote was a close one, with the Republicans winning with about 55% of the vote. The Republican vote was extremely strong in the industrialised north and most of the nation's major cities, whereas in the south and in the city of Rome, the monarchist vote won out. But it wasn't enough and the government proclaimed the birth of the Italian Republic. Umberto was unhappy with this result and refused to accept it. His advisers and close friends, some of whom were high-ranking members of the military, argued that force could kill a republic before it began, but he declined. This was because he didn't want a civil war. For one, he didn't want to repeat the horrors of the Second World War, and two, he believed that the Allies would have likely intervened on behalf of the Republicans, and so it was hopeless. In the end, Umberto was exiled from Italy and would live out the rest of his life in Portugal. Politicians in Italy then worked on creating a new constitution, which importantly outlawed any attempt to restore the monarchy ever again, and thereafter the Italian monarchy was dead. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching, with a special thanks to my patrons, James Bizanet, Kelly Moneymaker, Mr Wolf, Sky Chappelle, Jerry Lambdin, YN Hockey, Marvin Cassow, Jordan Longley, Gareth Turner, Rod D. Martin, Boogily Woogily, Captain Sidog, Spencer Lightfoot, Corsho Wolf, Gustav Swan, Matthew Shipley, Winston Kaywood, Robert Wetzel, Aaron the White, Marcus Arsner, Maggie Pakskowski, Anthony Beckett, Alex Schwinn, Moe, The McWhopper, Copper Tone, Spinning Three Plates, Ben Ivinson, Charles I, Adam Stalter and Scottish Trekkie.